Hello and welcome to Michigan and Other Mayhem, the show about Michigan, murder, mysteries, histories, and other mayhem from around the world. Your hosts are Allie and Jen. Okay, Jen, let's do this thing. Hello, Jen. Allie! Hey, guess what? What? Cue fake podcast music. Da 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 da. Da da. All right. So. At- Every time you do that, I think you're going to tell me something. I know. Well, at one point, I literally was thinking I'm like, at one point, she's not going to be like, what? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no. So what have you been up to? Oh, let me tell everybody. Tell everybody. So I turned 39 this year. It's hard, isn't it? I, brace yourself, everyone. Mm-hmm. I actually hurt my back on Friday. Okay. About 1030 in the morning while I was sitting on the couch. How'd you hurt yourself by sitting? (laughs) I was sitting on the couch and all of a sudden my back just sheer pain. I didn't do anything. (laughs) I can't even tell you. Okay. So let me tell you about the time my knee gave out. Yeah, well, one time my knee gave out because I stood up. I stood up from a seating position, and all of a sudden my knee just gave out. I'm 45. <laughs> oh my! I, yeah. I'm in. I'm in trouble. Like, yeah. and and so everybody knows that I had taken a muscle relaxer, and I thought, no biggie, you know. And we were going to record last night, <laughs> and you it, you only texted me like. 25 minutes before we were supposed to start and I said okay but I literally must have sent that text and just passed out (laughs) well dude muscle relaxers yeah are so powerful that one time I lost like a full day because I didn't realize how powerful they were and I hurt myself and I was like let me just take this teeny tiny pill and then I'm sure I'll feel better and then I was out I woke up the next day I took a half (laughs) of one oh shit yeah, so I'm in trouble. I might have to just like scrape some off. <laughs> but, yeah, oh my god, I'm so I'm getting so old and I'm in trouble. Like yeah. how does somebody hurt? I mean, I'm good for falling down the stairs yeah. and and tripping over myself and hurting myself that way, but literally I was just sitting on the couch. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I get it. It does just get worse. The other day, I could barely move my foot to get myself up the stairs. At one point, I considered sitting on my butt and scooting up because I put my foot underneath my leg when I was sitting, and I must have been there too long because all of a oh. sudden, then I couldn't move my ankle. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, this doesn't give me any hope because hopefully our kids yeah. will take care of us because <laughs> we're going to need someone. All right. Oh. Yeah. So what is your story going to be about today? Today, my story is about the murder of Allison Sargent okay. in Battle Creek, Michigan. All right. Mine, what do you got? Okay. Mine is not Michigan related. However, this is somebody I keep running into. It's Woody Guthrie. He did a song about Ludmila Pelvinchenko. I talked about her before. She did the um, sniper she was a sniper in World War II. Yep. She was the most effective female sniper. And yep. then um, she, he also did a song about the Italian Hall disaster that we re- I recently just did an episode on. Really? Up in the yeah, that was up in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. So I was just like, "Who is this guy?" And I actually didn't really know him, but I found out a lot of cool things about him. So I was like, "That's it. I'm doing it." I had to look yeah. him up. Well, tell us. Okay, do I'm gonna go first then? Yeah, I'm interested. All right. So I had to get my stuff from a few sources. So I got it from wiki, lifetimeline.com, alz.org, and kcrw.com. Are you ready? Here's the first part that I thought was really cool. So Woody Guthrie, he was um, born to his parents, Charles and Nora. Oh, his parents, Charles and Nora, actually were married in 1904. So this is going to be like a, a way back story. When Nora was 16 and Charles was 26. And he's actually named Woodrow Wilson Guthrie. And everybody calls him Woody because he was named after President Woodrow Wilson, who was elected in 1912. And that was the year that Woody was born. So Woodrow Wilson is elected and his parents are like, 
you know, there's, they have five kids. He's number three. They're like, all right, we're naming number three Woodrow Wilson. So they all live in Oklahoma at this point. Okay. And Woody's mom suffered from a genetic um, degenerative disease called Huntington's disease. And this is how I ended up on the ALZ.org site because it's like an Alzheimer's site and Huntington's is kind of like Alzheimer's disease because I was fascinated in like looking up this disease because it's genetic. So you get it through your parents to, you know, genetic code and it can strike people anywhere between the ages of two and 80. Okay. Wow. So it's got this huge fucking range, but it's most likely to strike you. If you have it, the symptoms are more, most likely to show up when you're between the ages of 30 and 50. So his mom has it. And I looked it up because later on, this is what Woody dies from. And I was just really curious, but mm -hmm. the symptoms include like, so it's mostly like almost like Alzheimer's, but it also has like uncontrollable movement in your bodies. Like your, like your legs might move on their own, like, you know, twitch back and forth. There's a decline in your mental faculties you have like really strong mood changes and especially between like depression, irritability and anxiety. Those are like the three you'll switch between. And you really struggle with your judgment. Memory recall is really hard and it's really hard for you to reason things through. So I'm like, it just sounds horrifying to me. Right. Yes. Yeah, so and I'm one of those people when something scares me, I need to need, I need to know everything about it. Right. So I'm all over these Huntington disease websites. <laughs> but, uh, so Charles had obtained, um, Woody's dad, he had, you know, properties, he was active in politics, he was a businessman, and this was like in the beginning of the marriage, but then like shit went wrong, you know, a couple of deals went bad, and in 1909, their house burned down just as they finished being built, like no fucking shit, like they put the last of everything on, they're like, all right, let's move our stuff in, and the house burned down. Oh, damn. I know, one of those, oh, fuck me moments, <laughs> like, uh. So in 1919, when Woody was seven, his older sister, Clara, and I think she was like 12, 13, 14, she died when her dress caught on fire. And it's okay. And, and all the articles and everything keeps mentioning that at the time that the dress caught on fire, that she was arguing with her mom, Nora. And I think they keep pointing that out because later on, Charles also, Charles, Woody's dad, also suffers from burns. And it was when he was fighting with Nora, she basically like set him on fire. Now, Nora has wow. Huntington's disease. Yeah, so she's having these issues, right? But nobody says Nora caught Clara on fire, but they all mention that it happens when they were arguing and Clara dies. And then seven years after Clara died, when Woody's 14, they do commit his mom to the Oklahoma Hospital for the Insane. Because at this point, they don't really know what Huntington's disease is. They don't know why that's her mental facilities are going down because she has this disease. Mm -hmm. So at this point, all the fortunes are lost and Charles is working off to pay debts from bad land sales in another state. I think he's in Texas and the family's from Oklahoma. So Woody, who was really considered intelligent by his teachers, did not like staying in school. Now, he was a voracious reader. Like he just loved to read books, but he hated the structure of like formal education. So by age 40, 14, he's busking. Do you know what that is? No, what is that? Okay, so if you're a busker or you're, if you're busking, it's when you stand out, you see them in like bigger cities, you stand outside on a corner or maybe in the subway and you sing songs or you play your guitar and you hope people give you money. It's basically singing or making music for money. That's oh, what, okay. That's what busking is. Yeah, you're hoping people yeah, give you some tips. And sometimes at, at age 14, he's begging for food and he's often staying with friends. Sometimes he stays on the street because at this point his dad's in Texas, he's in Oklahoma. And while he was busking, he would sing traditional English and Scottish folk songs. And sometimes he would sing ballads. And there's this black kid named George, who was a shoeshine kid, that taught Woody how to play uh, the blues on the harmonica. So now he's got an instrument, right? The harmonica. Mm -hmm. So Woody's father has him moved to Texas to be with him when he's 18 years old because he's like, I need even more help, you know, paying off all these debts. And the next year, when he's 19, his mom dies from Huntington disease in the Oklahoma hospital for the insane. And after this, Woody marries, but he creates this pattern of like, he he's all in with his family and then he'll like move to a different state and abandon them. I mean, it's weird. Like he comes okay. and goes. Yeah, he's either with you all the time or not with you at all. It creates like this pattern. And at age 19, you know, when all this is happening, he marries his first wife, Mary Jennings. And I just feel so fucking bad for Mary. Okay. They have three kids together. Bill is their son, and they have two daughters, Gwendolyn and Sue, all right? 
And one day they're, they're all living, <laughs> they're all living together. Uh, the, the depression happens, the dust bowl happens. And Woody's like, I'm going to go to another state to make money and basically doesn't come back. Oh my God. Yes. And with the three children, his only son, Bill, uh, from that marriage, Bill was his son from that marriage, dies in a car accident when he's 23 years old. And the two daughters, Gwendolyn and Sue, die at age 41 from Huntington's disease. So poor Mary Jennings, okay, who became Mary Guthrie, all of her children are dead and her husband abandoned her. Right. Jeez. I was just like, that is fuck. Someone needs to sing a sad song about that. Okay. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder, I wonder why that is. Why, like, that's, why he why he does that oh i don't know but he does it like repeatedly where he was like at one point he's in new york and his family is over on the west coast and then he gets his family and brings him to new york but then something happens and he leaves again and then they go somewhere else and it's like it's crazy i don't know <laughs> i thought maybe because like his dad at one point left him when he was a kid and he's yeah, in texas as look, he yeah. doesn't get it as anything out of the norm right because that's how he grew up yeah so the Dust Bowl, you know, hits the United States. This is where he's married. He does get married twice more and he has five more kids. And I will talk about the other five kids a little bit later. So he starts singing about the Dust Bowl, how hard it is to be part of the working class, because he's really considered to be like a champion of the working class. And he first became famous on the radio because he had this partner. Uh, she was called Lefty Lou on the radio show, but her real name was Maxine Christman. And they would play, like, traditional folk music, and they would get, you know, make political songs, all these different protest songs. And he has his very first popular album made off of songs from the radio show called The Dust Bowl Ballads. And at one point, somebody had made a songbook from his recordings that he had played on the station. They had made, like, their own songbook. And he writes the following on the back of the songbook. This is copyrighted in the U.S. under the seal of copyright number 154085 for a period of 28 years. And anybody caught singing it without our permission will be mighty good friends of Arn because we don't give a darn. Publish it, write it, sing it, swing to it, yodel it. We wrote it and that's all we wanted to do. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I thought it was about to go sideways. I thought he was going to be pissed, but then it gets all funny. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And this basically sets up the rest of his career. He writes songs and he sings songs all over the world about labor disputes, different things that he considers injustice. He's politically active and he's always the, considered like the heart of America. He's all for the working class. Fuck the rich man, you know. So let's all hang together. Well, in the night, late 1940s, early 1950s, Woody was, had been diagnosed with a few different mental disorders but in 1952, he does have the diagnosis of Huntington's, Huntington's disease. And at this point, he is married to his third wife. And he divorces his third wife after the diagnosis and remarries his second wife. And she took care of him until he died 15 years after that, October 3rd, 1967. Divorce, okay. Divorces her and then ends up back with her. No, divorces the third wife and goes back to the second wife. Oh, so he never divorced the second wife. Oh, no. So he divorced the second wife and he gets married again, right? He's married yeah. a third time. He gets the Huntington disease diagnosis and he divorces that third wife. Doesn't marry the second wife, but is with her from then till he dies. What the heck's wrong with the third wife? She could have taken care of him. Oh, no. I'm going to tell you about the third wife later. But first, I'm going to tell you some of, the, some of the things. Oh, I will tell you. Don't worry. Some of the things that Woody wrote about. There's this dude named Thomas Mooney. And Thomas Mooney was a political activist and a labor leader. And he was found guilty of setting off this bomb in San Francisco. But it was one of those things where, like, there's basically no evidence. And after 22 years in jail, they finally admit, like, okay, we fucked up. And they let him out. And Woody wrote this song called Tom Mooney is Free. Mm -hmm. He also liked to write about communism. But he did it, like, in a weird hillbilly accent because he tried to make it more palatable for people listening. And he actually had registered as a communist, but he didn't go to the meetings or anything. He said he just registered to show his support. I was like, okay. All right. Right? Radios? Um, he thought radios. So he wrote a song because he thought radios were overplaying the song God Bless America by <laughs> Irving Berlin. Yeah. So he wrote, <laughs> <laughs> yep. He thought the song was unrealistic and he thought it made people complacent. So he wrote a song to counteract it called This Land is Your Land. 
And this is like one of his most popular songs. This land is your land. This land yeah. is my land. That's Woody. Okay. No so he wrote way. that song. Yeah. From California to the New York Island. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. So that was his most famous song. He wrote that to counteract God Bless America because he felt like it was overplayed. He was actually hired by the U.S. Department of Interior, and the Department of Interior protects the country's national resources, their culture, their tribal communities. And they asked him to write about the Columbia River in different dams, for federal dams for a documentary, which he does. And people say it's actually really good. He got some awards for it. <laughs> yep, he did the song about Ludmila Pelvinchenko that we talked about. She was the uh, World War II sniper for Russia. Um, yeah. We talked about her, like, yeah, I think on our, like, 15th episode. He also had an enemy in someone that is now famous. Are you ready? And he yeah, considered this it? motherfucker, like, his sworn fucking enemy. Fred Trump, Donald Trump's dad. No way. Oh, yeah. Oh, that hated him. So he actually wrote a very popular song called Old Man Trump in 1954 about Fred Trump. Because Fred Trump, which he was sued for had racist housing practices. And he wrote that song talking about how racist Fred Trump is. Wow. Yeah. And he talked about, yeah, discriminatory rental policies. And Woody lived in a housing complex that was owned by Fred Trump called Beach Haven. And he used to refer to Beach Haven as Bitch Haven. <laughs> and he wrote a song called, I know, I'm like, that sounds like something I would do. I and know, then, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, like, I was like, like damn, you guys would be best friends. <laughs> right? We would hang out. He wrote a song called Beach Haven Hate Race, or Race Hate, about the discriminatory practices of Fred Trump. Yeah. Wow. Hated him. He wrote, like, several songs about it, but those were his most popular I Hate Trump songs. He also wrote songs about how expensive it is to live in California. He wrote songs about the Los Angeles River. Uh, he did write a song about the Calumet Italian Hall disaster from the UP. And that's the one I just did. Um, he actually blamed the mining companies for the deaths of the children in the song. And he definitely tried to make the mining companies look bad. Well, I believe that that's, you know, that, that's their position. Oh, yeah. I think they did it. I think they did it, too. I mean, we don't have any evidence, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so here are a few other facts about him, and I will talk about his other kids now and his third wife. So he did write an autobiography in 1943, and it was called Bound for Glory. And in 1976, it was made into a movie featuring David Carradine. And when I said something about Woody Guthrie to my dad, my dad goes, oh, yeah, they made a movie uh, about his life. And uh, they had the guy in it from the TV show Kung Fu. And I was like, David Carradine? My dad was like, yeah, how'd you know? I was like, I just know a little bit about Woody Guthrie right now. <laughs> 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 so he was actually drafted for the World War, okay? And he tried to be accepted as a USO performer instead of like a soldier. And it just did not work. So then he did become part of the Merchant Marines. And he was part of the Merchant Marines until 1945 when the U.S. Just government decided that because he, remember, he was listed as a communist. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, no, you're not qualified for the Merchant Marines. And they put him in the regular army. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So his second marriage, the one that he went back to when he was diagnosed with Huntington disease, it gave him four of his five kids that he had after Mary. So all together, he had eight kids, the three that died that he had with Mary. And then he had four with his second wife. And one is his very famous son, Arlo Guthrie. Guthrie, have you ever heard of him? Arlo Guthrie? No. He's also a famous folk singer. And like his dad, he is, like, he does lean left politically and he uses his music to express his ideas, right? And at the end of his life, when he had married, before the Huntington disease things, when he had married for the third time, he actually had a daughter named Lorena Lynn. Lorena Lynn, not Loretta. Loretta Lynn. Every time I tried to say it out loud, I kept saying Loretta Lynn. I was like, that's a different country singer. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they had, okay, so they had the daughter, Loretta Lynn. They divorced, remember, when he gets his uh, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And they put Loretta Lynn up for adoption. And she was taken in by friends. And isn't mm -hmm. that weird? I'm like, yeah. you guys, nobody took the kid? <laughs> like, and yeah. Loretta Lynn died in 1973 at age 19 in a car accident. So also the daughter he had, all the children he had with the, his wife, Aniki, also died because he, he had one daughter and she died. That's wow. four out of his eight kids dying. Yeah, before he died. 
That is devastating to me <laughs> when your yeah. kids die before you. Yeah. And you have yep. eight kids and four of them die. Oh God. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody dies, but I mean, die before you, it just mm-hmm. kills me. Right. So Bob Dylan actually was a really good friend with Woody Guthrie and he considered Woody, Woody Guthrie his mentor in folk singing. I was like, what? Oh, okay. Yeah. And my That's last true. fact is Woody Guthrie has a museum called the Woody Guthrie Center, and it is located in Oklahoma, his birth state. Wow, he's interesting. I I'm going to look up, so I'm gonna have to look up his songs. Yeah, though, this land is your land. As soon as they said that, I'm like, oh, my God, I know that one. I actually know the first stanza. <laughs> and that's it. But I do know that one. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and his son, actually, Arlo, is pretty... Um, pretty famous i mean i don't i don't follow a lot of folk singing but no i don't either yeah obviously it's in now that i know it's this interesting i'm gonna have to uh, you can't help yourself i know at one point my dad was like uh, how do you know so much about woody guthrie i'm like i don't know <laughs> just been reading <laughs> you like to be in the know yeah i said i'm one of those people like even when they said huntington's disease i couldn't help but to look up huntington's disease because i wanted to know what did that mean? You know what I mean? What does that mean when you have Huntington's disease? Yeah. It, yeah. Mean bad, it means bad shit for you. Yeah. It, yeah. it does sound bad. It is bad. All right. Tell me about your murder. All right. So I stumbled upon the old article back from March on Allison's murder on MLive. Okay. So Allison was age 25. And she was reported missing after last being seen at a local grocery store. What's her last name? Sergeant. Like as an, is it like the army sergeant? S-A-R-G-E-N-T. Okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) In, in Battle Creek. So last seen Battle Creek, March 5th. Coming out of a store, a party store? Coming out of a grocery store. I believe it was the Myers. Oh, okay. And then, so she was reported missing, and she was found by a passerby on March 7th, so a couple days later, in a remote area. So so she's on the side of the road at this point, her dead body? Yep. Okay. So police were investigating, and she was shot and killed they believe shot and killed at her home and her body was taken to this remote area and dumped did they say because there was like blood in the home and stuff or no and this was the interesting part probably for this one because usually you know you know the whys like why do they believe that she was killed at her home or later on here in a minute you're going to find out like why did they arrest this person? Right. Like they have. And I could find nothing, no details. No, that always other, kills me. Yeah. Other than, and I don't know the reason why. So I think this happened in one of the other ones that I did where it was just void of information. Oh my it God, was just, time, the- you Google it 15 different ways too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I trust me. I've done it. So they believe she was killed at home for whatever reason and taken to the remote area and dumped. Her vehicle was also missing during this time. And it was found a couple days later after her body on March 10th, completely burnt out in Detroit. Oh, no shit. So people are trying to hide evidence. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because Battle Creek and, and Detroit are pretty far apart. Yeah, they are. You had to work to get that car back. That was a few hours of driving. Right. So while investigating, the police reviewed the surveillance tapes from the grocery store, and they identified Allison leaving the store with a gentleman. It oh, was okay. later, It was later found this was, this gentleman was her boyfriend, Jose... I don't know how to pronounce the last name. J-U-A-R-E-Z. Okay. Age 26. Okay. So we know that he, you know, was at least one of the last people that seen her. 
because oh, yeah. he was in the grocery store. So I searched the web trying to find more information on it. Okay. And I came across that there is none. Uh. <laughs> and on June 18th, so last week, Jose was charged with open murder, mutilation of a dead body, possessing a firearms as a felon, wow. and using a fire, firearm to commit a felony. <laughs> but again, like, no information on why they why believe they Jose committed the murder. Other yeah. than... Yeah. You, we saw all him on the tape? And yeah. he's the boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, we all know because he's the boyfriend and he was, you know, the last person known to have seen her. But nothing. I, I figured there would be something like they found something in the house or whatnot. And there just there just wasn't anything. Dang. Yeah, it makes me wonder, like, was there blood in the house? And that's how you know that that's where she died. Like, how do you know she died there? Share with the rest of us. Yeah, or that remote area didn't have enough evidence, so you knew she wasn't murdered there. Right? But but I guess he could have killed her at the house, drove her to the remote area, then drove the vehicle all the way to Detroit, burnt the damn thing out, and came home. Yeah, you'd have to have someone come pick you up at that point. You know what I mean? I don't think you can ride a bus back to Battle Creek, or maybe you can. No, I don't think, I don't think there's a bus to Battle Creek. <laughs> No, you have to grab a greyhound, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he had to have help. If he is from Battle Creek and he drove in the car, ended up in Detroit, somebody drove it there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, so I, and that's that's nuts. Yeah. So I marked this one to follow up because on his in his trial, we'll figure out like what exactly led them to believe, other than you know the two things we already know. It's okay. always, always the husband, the boyfriend. Always. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, I know, don't mean to dictate you, but I want to talk to you next time. I'm going to talk to you about words that we mispronounce in Michigan. And I um, know I'm, I'm guilty of a lot of it. Oh, yeah. I have. I, I miss do we're all kinds of words. Well, there are some words and there's even this one article I'm working on for later in which my brain knows how to say the word, but my mouth cannot get with the fucking program. Like by the time it comes out my mouth, it doesn't sound like my brain is telling, like mouth is not understanding what brain is telling it to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, that's not how it's supposed to sound. Mouth, brain, keep talking to it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to do different things that we say. It, I got interested in it when I read this article called Michiganders, believe it or not, you have an accent. It was an NPR article. <laughs> And I, was uh, I, like, I was like, you got me. You got me. Okay. Well, I don't have that accent. And I get told a lot. I People correct me all the time when I talk. And yeah. like when I say, you know, you want to, do you want a soda? Yeah. And they're but, like, you mean pop. And I'm yeah. like, no, I mean soda. Yeah. Well, my sister tries to say soda all the time. But I was just like, well, you think you are a fancy bitch? It's pop. No. I think... <laughs> They in Ohio it's yes. pop Coke is pop. Yeah. Pepsi's pop. Orange soda. Grape yeah. soda. It's not grape pop. It's pop, yeah. What kind it of is, pop do you want? Grape. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is amazing like that too. So my pronunciation of things and then my usage of words. Well, I could tell you your brother says the word mute instead of moot when you say it's a moot point he said mute i'm like it's not mute it's moot m-o-o-t and he's like no it's mute and now it's like one of the things we laugh about <laughs> or, or the thing that he does and now we laugh about it and i think he does it on purpose but he says you know the saying he says it depletes the purpose and i was like no michael it defeats the purpose <laughs> and he's like no it depletes it and i was like no it doesn't but he'll make a good case for why deplete also works <laughs> <laughs> yes and i could tell you though uh right before i'm about to say bye we'll, we could talk about it michigan mispronounced but if you mispronounce the word library in front of my sister poppy she will never let you live past that moment it, it it's not a library okay 
you go to the library and so many people uh, say library and she will chop at your throat. She, yeah, I think I say that. <laughs> she's a grammar Nazi. I also, you know how people say kindergarten? Yeah, okay. kindergarten. Yeah, you have to say kindergarten or, or that hoe will come stomping for you. <laughs> she is, we call her the family grammar Nazi. She will get you. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I see her, I'm going to be like, I went to the library. Yeah, you could be like, I went to the library and there's a kindergarten class there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'd love to see the look on her face. So call me over first. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Contact us at Anchor or Michigan and Other Mayhem at gmail.com or on Facebook to join the conversation, listen to the podcast, or correct us when necessary. Rate and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast provider. Bye-bye now.